So I just saw that uh, Bitcoin is down, what, $537 uh, today. Panic! It, I know, panic. Uh, it, it is incredible. It's almost up to 40000 again. I know. It's like thirty-eight or thirty-seven thousand dollars now per Bitcoin. Legitimately incredible, considering there's this been a slew of really... bad news over yeah. the past year. People may know Sam Bankman-Fried. Yeah, uh, but, there was a big Binance thing that happened uh, last week. Um, yeah. But you, but you also have the government saying we're never going to do that. I, we're going to we're going to introduce our own Fed coin. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren is not on board. So if Elizabeth Warren is on board, should you be? I mean, shouldn't you agree with whatever Elizabeth Warren says? She's not on board for... She's not a big fan of the Bitcoin. Oh, she's not for the CBDs. Oh, oh, she lo- I'm sure she'd be fine with that. Yeah, sure but she not, does not want Bitcoin. No. This is decentralized. They don't have control of it, so of course people don't like it. But it is interesting to see... I mean, this is a big part of uh, what the Argentinian, the new guy, Malay, down there, yeah. he's a big Bitcoin guy. Um, you know, the, you know, there's... You know, I'd love some to of the can- A lot of the candidates uh, are pretty good on this topic as well including even i have to say rfk jr is, mm-hmm. is good on this who i'm not a fan of uh ramaswamy is big on this uh desantis has DeSantis. been desantis has been really good on the central bank digital currency i mean he people are like why is he even talking about this you know a year ago <laughs> well i think we've seen how important it is and let me let, let me show you because I, so, I want to put together a show next year on cbdc and show what it really is let me just show you a couple of things I found here recently. Uh, cut 11. This is a Dutch political commentator on central bank digital currencies because this is happening all over the Western world. Listen. If we accept the fact that a QR code grants us access to society, what makes you think that they won't link that to anything else except for your vaccination status? What if that green screen on your phone that grants you access to society turns red the moment you take a flight too many, or you uh, eat meat too much, or you didn't recycle your plastic yesterday, how dare you? What if that green screen on your phone that is linked to your digital wallet that's filled with nothing more but, (laughs) I'm gonna say it, central bank digital currencies will turn red the moment you say something that the government classifies as hate speech? What if they can turn off your life at the push of one button? If they can do it in China, they can do it here. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom that is limited to those who do and say exactly what the government wants them to do and say is no freedom. It's imprisonment dressed up as freedom. And we need to see it for what it is. If we want to turn this around, that is. We need to wake up. We need to speak up. We need to say no, draw a line, and disobey these laws. Now, listen, in Australia, here's a politician in Australia warning the Australians about central bank digital currencies. Cut 50. Let's be blunt. The so-called trusted digital identity bill represents a watershed moment in Australian history. We stand at the divide between a free personal enterprise future and a digital surveillance age. If nothing is done to stop this bill, government will sit in the middle of every interaction Australians have with each other and with the world. And it achieves this in the same way China does, by creating a digital identity that forms a central part of a person's life. You can call it a license to live. What began with COVID contact tracing, vaccine passports and QR check-ins will soon be formalized by an inescapable digital identity. It signals the complete end of consumer privacy, the end of citizen anonymity, and the beginning of a big brother digital age that treats the people of Australia as products rather than free human beings. The government intends to build a complete digital record of every Australian to be shared and used. Our medical history, our shopping preferences, who we associate with, whether our choices are really so-called green, Social security, veteran services, travel records, website viewing, employment status, and social media comments. Everything will go on the record and be available to any large corporation that can pay for access. Now, let me give you one from the United States. This is a member of the uh, Minneapolis Federal Reserve. This is the president of the Minneapolis Federal Reserve uh, Bank. This is what he says about CBDCs. 
central bank digital currency. Do you think that that is something that you all should be looking into seriously? How to, to what degree should you be looking into it seriously? Just what, what are your thoughts on CBDC? I mean, as the, uh, my colleagues at the Federal Reserve have talked about, we are examining it. Uh, I'll tell you my personal bias is I'm pretty skeptical. I keep asking anybody, anybody at the Fed or outside of the Fed to explain to me what problem this is solving. A digital, I can send anybody in this room $5 with Venmo right now, <laughs> right? No, seriously. So what is it that a CBDC could do that Venmo can't do? And all I get is a bunch of hand-waving. I get a bunch, well, maybe it's better for financial inclusion. Maybe it's better for cross-border remittances. Maybe. Is there any evidence that it is? And you know, they say, well, what about China? China is doing it. Well, I can see why China would do it. If they want to monitor every one of your transactions, you could do that with the central bank digital currency. You can't do that with Venmo. If you want to impose negative interest rates, you could do that with the central bank digital currency. You can't do that with Venmo. And if you want to directly tax customer accounts, you could do that with the central bank digital currency. You can't do that with Venmo. So I get why China would be interested. Why would the American people be for that? <laughs> yeah. So this kind of goes into what I'm talking about tonight on TV. Gaslighting. Do you know what that term even means? Yeah, I did. I didn't for a long time, but I do now. Yeah, mainly because so many people say it, I made myself look it up. Right, <laughs> and I was like, "What does this even mean? I can't, I don't even understand it." And it is. I mean, it's it is really it fe- seemingly really is going on. Oh my! God. I'm going to prove it to you tonight. First okay. of all, I'm starting the show tonight, going back to the 1940s, uh, and showing you where I'm being. You're being gaslit. They're gaslighting you. Where that term came from, what it meant. It's important context because the polls are in. The two issues Americans are most concerned about right now. Number one, the economy. Number two, immigration. And the gaslighting on these two issues from the Biden administration and the media are, it's crazy. It is crazy town, bonkers. We're being lied to about the state of the economy. We're being lied to about what's really happening at the border. Tonight, I'm going to show you the real numbers. Uh, and they're, uh, they're a little shocking. They're a little shocking. Don't miss tonight's Wednesday night special, 9 p.m. Eastern on Blaze TV, then 9.30 Eastern on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Glenn Beck. Are we still running the uh, Blaze TV uh, cyber that was just on Monday? You can join us now and you'll save 20 bucks with the promo code Glenn at blazetv.com slash Glenn. Blazetv.com slash Glenn. We'll see you tonight at 9 p.m.